Hey everybody, I'm Rob Jolliffe. Um, I recorded a video and that I walked through an extension I created and I want to I want to share that with everybody today as part of um, the Saber Expert series. So let's uh, let's get into it. Um, so yeah, I'm calling this the simple Al extension video and basically um, a, a little bit of background in case you don't know. My name is Rob Jolliffe. I'm a Microsoft Dynamics Business Central and supply chain and manufacturing consultant. I don't do a lot of programming, but I dabble. And today I decided to write some code, kind of prove something, but um, just FYI, if you're watching this video, if you've been watching our other videos, we, we tend to be focused on targeting small business manufacturers who are looking at a, a mid market uh, ERP system for their business, something in the less than a couple hundred thousand dollars um, in the ERP pricing range rather than in the millions of dollars. <clears throat> and if you like what you saw in this video, or if you just want to ask me some questions, if you're trying to do some of your own AL coding and you're, you're running into troubles, you can book a meeting with me for half an hour and I'd, I'd be quite happy to just have a chat with you. Now I'm not an AL developer. So if you're looking for like expert AL development help to fix some problem, don't. I, I had to go to a couple of my developers and just ask them to bail me out of a couple of areas but I might be able to help you with uh, parts of it. I'm going to have the sample code, the zip file of the sample code just uh, attached to this. It's not gonna have a launch.json file on it. It's just gonna have the app.json file um, and the al files that I created. So if you are looking for um, like, I wanna set up Business Central so I can code, I want to install Visual Studio Code, et cetera. There are lots of great YouTube videos on how to do that. So I'll get, uh, I'll link a couple that I know of to the video description and you, you can watch those. Meanwhile, let's get into the video that I recorded. Hey everybody, every now and again, Rob Jolliffe decides to do a little bit of coding. And this is a case where I decided to throw some code together and I'd like to demonstrate what this code does. This will be added to our Saber production app. And I'm also gonna walk through really quickly how I did this coding. So I run in a virtual environment. So you'll see here VDET Rob Dev, which is a virtual Windows 10 computer. I have Visual Studio Code installed on this computer and I've written a very small little app that I call the example filtering app from Saber Limited. And um, let me let me show you how, how this will work. So I have a Kronos Canada and I'm going to go into a sales quote. And normally if I add a GL account, um, I'm going to get a list of every single GL account that's possible. But in this case, I actually get a really short list. And that's what this, this customization is meant to do. It's meant to give me a, a short list instead of a big long list. So I'll show you how it works. Um, I'll start with user setup because user setup is how you how you set this up so that users have this filtering. And you'll notice Robert is set to only have GL accounts for sales and jobs GL accounts. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear those from Robert and I'll uh, I'll go back to the to here and then I'll, I'll run again. And now you're gonna see that I got everything from cash to every GL account in the in the system. If I look at the full list, it's it's all of the posting accounts that are that are there. But if I go back to user setup and I go in and I say, no, you know what, Robert should only have sales GL accounts. Then Robert only has sales GL accounts, which are only three. All right. So we'll go back to user setup and we'll put it back to the way it was before, which um, was that I had sales and jobs. So what I, I've done is I've set up uh, four filter groups here, including one called special, which is just sort of a leftover for anything that I couldn't figure out from these. So if Rob has sales and uh, sales GLs and jobs GLs, then my drop down has these GL accounts in it. So how did how did these get determined? So if I if I go into the chart of accounts now. What I can do is I can go into accounts and I can mark them that I want them to show up. So if I go into cash, for instance, and I decide I want the cash account to show up for the sales, no problem. Now, 
I, I won't do that because I don't think it makes sense, but maybe it makes sense for the special. Maybe certain people with the special group should be able to see this. What I could also do though, is I could try and put it on this, um, this account here, but this is a begin total. If I try and select it, I'm gonna get an error message. It has to be an account type posting. So this account type has to be posting. The other thing that I don't wanna have is I don't wanna accidentally, if I go to the sales section, I have certain GL accounts like these two, which are not direct posting. People should not be able to post directly to them. Now I accidentally turned this one on earlier, so I'll turn it off. But when I try and turn it back on, I've put in the error message that I can't uh, set that. So if it doesn't allow direct posting, I, I can't do that. Okay. So <clears throat> what I have done though, is I've gone into certain accounts that do allow direct posting and I can set them, excuse me, do not allow, that's a do not, does not allow direct posting. So I'll leave that page. Um, a posting, I need a posting account that allows direct posting like that. So I could go into that and I can set that account that allows direct posting. I can set the different characteristics on it. So this job sales actually should allow direct posting. So I'll turn it on for direct posting and I'll make it a sales and a GL, a jobs GL account. Now what that's, what's going to happen then is these accounts are going to be added to my dropdown because I have the jobs and the sales settings. And since I have set some of them for both jobs and sales, then they're going to show up. If I again go to user setup and take a look at my user setup, now I see the jobs and GL filter for me. I'll take the jobs off and I'll drop down again and I'll have a shorter list now. I still have I still have some of them that even though they're jobs because they're both jobs and sales accounts and if they're jobs and sales accounts and I'm sales I will see them all so this is a way to allow your sales reps to pick GL accounts when they're selling but only pick the ones that you want allow your engineers to pick um, accounts on a job planning line so if we go to jobs and this is where this would um, this would be uh, relevant and I go to the job this job for reception area remodel. I go into the walls here and I go to the job planning lines and I want to add a budget, something I'm going to be purchasing. So it's going to be part of the cost that is a GL account and I go to choose from it. I now have this list, which is the same list we saw before. So, the list is the same no matter where you are, whether you're in a sales quote or you're in a job planning line. It, it, it is restricted list, but it is able to be set up on a per user basis. So those users need to be trained and told which ones are to be eligible for which things. It's rare that you have somebody who puts sales quotes in and puts sales planning lines in or job planning lines or puts purchase orders in and puts sales quotes in, etc. So we felt that having it this way made sense. Now let's go over the code and take a look at just how this was coded. So I used Algo to create a default project and I saved it into a folder in my system. And what I started with was I started by going into the table for the user setup and I added four fields to the user setup table. So they were sales GL only, which the caption is sales GL only, GL only um, and uh, purchase GL only and jobs aha GL only and special GL only I had noticed a misspelling error in one place and couldn't find it so these four fields are now added to the table user setup I went into the a page extension and created a page extension for user setup and after the field that already is on the page the normal page sales invoice posting policy i added those fields sales gl only purchase gl only jobs gl only and special gl only and i added tooltips so that users could see what they are for so if i go back in in here and i go to user setup and i hover 
I get the little tooltip. Set this field to filter GL accounts that appear when selected to those marked as sales GL accounts on the account card. Okay, which is this. Set this field to filter GL accounts that appear when selected to those marked as sales GL. So I added a table extension with fields that are Booleans, check marks. I added them to the page user setup through a page extension on user setup. After, I have to do a layout, then I do an add after, and I pick the field in the user setup page, in this case, sales invoice posting policy that I want it to, to go in after. So sales invoice posting policy is a standard field. Sales invoice posting policy is where I want it to be added after. And then I just put my fields in. These fields have to be in the table. If the table extension is being created, they're in the table. I put some tooltips on them and I made them application area all. And I changed their, their captions because the purchase GL only, I thought, yeah, purchase GL filter might be a better caption. Then I went into the GL accounts and this is a little bit more complicated. I added the fields as Booleans to whether it's a sales GL account or purchase GL account to the table. And I did this little on validate trigger. So it's very similar. I've got this field, I've added it to the table, but I did the on validate. And you'll notice in the on validate, if the sales GL account is true, so I'm changing the check mark to a true check mark, then check the account and I pass the name of the account. And check account, it's a little validation here. So, so that I don't write this over and over and over again. I just call this method called check account. And it checks to see if the account type is a posting account. And if it is a posting account, then it, it, it's fine. But if it's not, so it's not, then it says you can't set the, the field to true on an account that is not a posting account. Um, and then I check to see if the direct posting is true. So if, if not direct posting, which is, means it's false, then you can't set the field name, the account name true on an account that does not allow direct posting. So there's the account name. And I just call this four times, once for each check mark that you could check. And I check. Every time you try and check one of those check marks, it double checks to make sure you can check those check marks. Because we don't want to show the user a field on the dropdown that they can't use. Because we're going to show them the fields that are in here. Okay. Then I add those into um, the GL card after account category. So I've added those fields that I added into my table extension. I've added them after account category on the um, chart of accounts. So if I go to the chart of accounts and I go to one of these field, these uh, accounts that I said, actually I could have gone to any account, but I'll go down to one of the ones I was using, job sales. You'll see after account category, that's where these four fields have appeared. This is one of the amazing things about Business Central in my mind. These fields just look like they're regular standard Business Central fields, even though they're part of my custom extension. I love it. It's one of the great things about the product. Okay, so I've got all that done. So I have, I have those, I have my app, this is the actual app that gets created. So I have this G this AL file, this AL file, this AL file, this AL file. We've gone through all those. This is the one that does the work. This is a page extension on the account list. So the account list is this. And we can, to find out that this is the account list, we select from full list, and then we control F1 and GL account list, page 18, GL account list. So we go in here, GL account list is the page we're extending. So we've created the page extension on GL account list. We try, it's all it is is just on the trigger of opening the page. When we open the page, we are going to open up the user setup and we're going to open up the GL accounts. This is where it's a little tricky. So on user setup, we filter for the user, and then we look and see if we can find that user in the account setup. And if we can, then we in, we take this GL accounts record here 
and we set it to filter group minus one. Now what filter group minus one is a special filter group that does an or filter, meaning if it's a sales GL account only, or it's a GL jobs GL, or it's a purchase GL, et cetera, it will filter that. And we set, we check and see if that user is supposed to see sales GL accounts. And if they are, we filter to the sales GL accounts. We do the same for jobs. We do the same for purchasing. We do the same for special. And we check and see if we get any fields from that so we, or any records. So we do something called a find set and begin repeating through those records. For each record, we, um, we now, so we're in the GL accounts record, which we created, but now we, we record on the actual form. So on the actual GL account list form, we say, okay, get me the record set for that. And um, we want to we want to look at the same record as our GL account. So the dot get is going to get a record with the primary key that matches what we put in as the field list after. So record dot get is like look up this this specific record by its primary key. And primary key of GL accounts is just the GL account number. So we pass that. And then we mark it true which is like putting a check mark on it, essentially, in code. And we loop through until we don't find any more records. And then on the record set, the rack is the local record set of this page. We mark only true, which means just hide all the ones that don't have the check mark on them. Now, this is an invisible check mark. You can't see it on the screen, but this is essentially what it's done. And then we just exit this method. So if we don't find the user setup, that user isn't in the user setup list, nothing will happen. <clears throat> if we find the user setup, but none of these filters are true, then we will find set nothing and we will just exit and nothing will happen. So if we find the user and user setup and set a filter and filter and find GL accounts that have been flagged and marked for that, then we will loop through them, mark them and say, just show these ones to the user. And that is that all of the code. So um, I'm not going to get into how to set up your AL environment and how to do debugging, but I thought this was a, a kind of a neat little video explaining uh, a functionality in Business Central that I thought we should add because even within our own team, people are like, well, which GL account should I use? There's so many. Okay, well, here's the five. Just use one of these five and the, we can change the descriptions to make them logical. And I thought, wow, this is really helpful. Well, let's just put this in our Sabre production app uh, for every customer. I hope you um, liked this video and thought this was uh, interesting. If you do like the video, please don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel and like the video. And you will also find a meeting, uh, set up a meeting uh, link in the body of the video if you'd like to set up a meeting with me. Thanks very much and have a great day.